My name's Matt, welcome to the shop, and today we're going to do something a bit different. Um, the reason why is I was trying to think how to do this video in front of the blackboard, whiteboard, whatever, and um, it just texts me, a l I'd have to print out the Excel sheets and all that shit, and there's no point in doing that. But it is a very good question, so Adam here said, watch the talk series uh, and saw in one video where you compared the MT09 engine to the R1 engine. In the end, uh, when we're talking about detuned engines, blah, 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 about all the other bikes, are, uh, are they only reducing maximum horsepower to improve uh, power across the rev range? How do cramp profiles and or intake velocities, uh, velocity tuning parts of this? If you're already on a video, I'll find it eventually, uh, but would love a link, all that kind of rubbish. Which is a very good point. Not rubbish, sorry, it's just the way I yabber on. Um, it's a very good point because, like he says here, you know, you have the MT10 versus the R1, or the R6 versus the FZ6 and ZX10, and so on, and so on, and so on. You know, it's quite common. Um, an example is just say, like, an XJ6, an XJ6, or an FZ6. R6 engine, and they're just saying the blurb usually for these catalogs, um, not catalogs, articles in wank mags and stuff. They'll say stuff like, Oh, it's just a, a detuned, whatever. Um, so, in a sense, I, I, I get two things from this is basically, What is the point? Uh, you know, what why do they do this? And is it exactly like that? You know what I mean? Is it just the cam timing stuff like that? So I thought, as a demonstration, in a sense, um, to show the point, this is Fowler's. I've got no affiliation. Shut up, fucking phone. I've got no affiliation with these, uh, with Fowler's or anything. I do get bits from them, but I get bits from other people as well. Um, but this is the parts manual, and this is for the um, MT10, uh, which you know has the R1 engine, the crossplane R1 engine in it. And, you know, it's the usual microfiche um, bits and pieces and so on and so on. thing is, this can actually tell you quite a lot. And here's the uh, 2018 R1. As you can see, the arrangements are similar-ish. You can see a flick between the pictures. There are some slight changes, so on and so on. But what I did was, is I've gone through not all of this, fucking I'll be here forever, but some of this. So taking the, date, the the information from one and the information from another. And what I've done is stuck this together. So on this side we have the MT10 and this side we have the R1. Uh, both 2018, so both of these from here. This is the 2018, so if I just click on MT10, 2018, yada, 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 and so on. Same thing for this. What do we click on? Cowling. Click on this. R1 2018, blah, 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 and away you go. And you get all these listings with all the prices and stuff. Don't look at them too much, it'll make you go blind. So, <laughs> comparing these, we can see the difference between the two. So we've just got head here, and then bottom end, stuff like that. So if you look at the camshaft assembly, uh, one and two, they don't differentiate. It's just the drawings. They don't actually say exhaust and intake. But it doesn't really matter. What you can see is you can see the uh, what it's meant to be, the price, the quantity, and the total price, basically multiplied by the quantity. And you'll see these part numbers here, and you'll see the R1 part numbers here. So the ones that are highlighted in orange are the ones that are different. Um, so the R1 uh, camshafts, which you would expect, both in in intake and exhaust are different because they have different timing. And you can see the prices are also different. Um, because I don't have these things sat in front of me, it is uh, some of its guesstimations. So these are more expensive. Why? Maybe different materials. This is from the 2CR engine. This is from the B67. Uh, it could be cheaper materials. It could be not a nice enough grind. It could be just the processing. These two camshafts could look quite a bit different if you had them in front of you but regardless there is a price difference the r1 you know costing more now i know people are going to automatically jump to conclusions and say well you pay more for just because it says r1 but these are part numbers and if we actually go down this you'll notice here 
So this is the cam chain. I do apologise if you can't see this very well. Let's zoom in a bit. There we go. That's a bit better. Um, this is the, the chain itself. These have exactly the same part numbers for both bikes. And they are the same price. So this idea that you pay more just because it's R1 instead of whatever. Eh. We'll get to that. Um, uh, cam chain tensioner assembly. Even though they are different part numbers... Um, so this is from the 2CR for the MT-10. Uh, the the prices are the same. So, meh, you know, take what, what take from it what you will. Uh, there is a big difference here. So this is the intake valve, and the price is 139 versus 61. But the um, MT-10 valves are steel, and the uh, Yamaha R1s are titanium. It's not just the fact of the material cost, it's also processing. The tooling is different to make uh, titanium valves. Not only that, is they also basically put coatings on them, so on and so on. If we look at the exhaust valves, both, uh, both exhaust valves have the same part number and they have the same price. So this is, in a way, how the MT-10 is cheaper because it has the steel valves versus the sexier ones for the R1. So all of these numbers you see in green, these are the ones where the prices are the greatest. So if the price is the same, they're not highlighted. If they're more expensive, then you'll see a higher price. So the spring seat for the valve for the MT-10 is six quid. For the R1, it is 17 quid. They are different prices, and I imagine the, these are titanium or some sexy coating or something. Weirdly enough, the springs for the inner and outer um, valve springs it's actually the MT that are more expensive uh, these are 17 quid versus 14 quid exactly why different part numbers I don't know and you'll see these numbers these are all BX4 and these are BX67 uh, there is no BX4 on this side uh, cylinder heads so the cylinder head here 1000 no, 1, uh, you know 1600 quid for the R1, it's one thousand. Well, it's nearly two grand. Uh, the part numbers are different, and I imagine that there are slight changes because the valve timing is different, the porting is going to be different, so on and so on. You've also got to realise that they include in this, they might be tighter tolerances, stuff like that, so they might have a higher rejection rate of the castings. Um, basically, the, the A-grade heads are picked for this, but they are different, different part numbers. The part number doesn't always tell you that there is something massively different. Uh, the other thing is, in this is included stuff like the valve seats. And because these are running titanium valve seats, they may have, uh, titanium valves, they may have a different material for the uh, valve seats. So that has to be included in that as well. This is 1,600, 1,900, give or take a bit. You know, it's 300 quid difference. If you're talking 16 valve seats, that you know that could be that price. The weirdest one that I have found is this one, the one with the blue arrow in. And the reason why is because this is uh, the cylinder valve, uh, you know, the rocker cover, the valve cover. Now, these part numbers are different. The Yamaha R1, the R1 is basically 100 quid more. But I found one. And I was thinking, oh, this might be a good example. So this is, sorry, this is the uh, R1 valve cover. And if I flip it around, you'll see it says magnesium there. And it says 2CR. Well, actually, no, it looks like someone scribbled that out with something. Well, that is weird, isn't it? Looks like it goes over the top. It's in crayon. But, yeah, that's the, this is a 2CR one. Now... On the parts listing, none of these say 2CR, which is a bit of a funky thing. Um, what You can't... Two, I don't know what it might say in there. It does say magnesium. Now, someone did list this on eBay as the MT-10, not the R1 version. That says magnesium. So I was expect. Oh, no, this is the R1 one, sorry. This is the 2CR R1 one. Um, when I looked at an MT-10 one, uh, lo and behold... That says 2CR on there. But this also says magnesium. I was expecting the MT-10 one to be aluminium. 
and the R1 one be magnesium, but no, they're both magnesium. So exactly what the massive discrepancy in 100 quid is, that could be a taste of this, this is R1, this is MT10, that kind of thing. There might be a difference in the type of magnesium alloy, and them pictures aren't gospel. The part numbers are different. It's a shame that they don't have the part numbers um, in the castings. You know, 2, two uh, two zero two or two C, two zero two two nine seven, is not the part number in any of these, which is a shame. Um, and I can't, you know, all these date stamps and stuff. I can't really see anything that, apart from that, that differentiates the two. Uh, so you know, shit happens. But uh, when we actually look at the two, so with all these differences, all these orange ones are the ones that the, the different part numbers for the R one. Um, and then the greens are the more expensive, so you can see that these prices are higher. The total cost of all of the head assembly, it's not all the nuts and bolts, just the main components, is 5,116 quid, and this is 6,381. Now, obviously, these are after, not aftermarket, um, OEM parts, you know, so the prices are ridiculous. Um but it's a difference of 1265 quid and when you look at some of these parts you know like the titanium valves all the way through the r1 and not the mt10 you can kind of see a difference you know these if we had all these components in front of us i haven't got six well i haven't got 12 grand nearly to chuck away but you know if you had these parts you'd see there would be a difference then we get to the bottom end which is the more interesting bit uh, the R1 crank has a BX4, where this has a BX67. £2,000 for the MT10. And £2,800 for the R1. Um, oh, sorry, that's a crank case. Sorry, I'm fucking can't read here. So the crank case assembly is a bit more expensive for the R1. Um, the crank shaft, strangely enough, is more expensive for the MT10. We're only talking 20 quid, so meh, whatever that cost might be for, don't know. Uh, Conrod assembly. So the Conrod assembly is a good one because we can see the difference. This is the MT10 Conrods. This is from a, 20, a 2018. Um, you can see the numbers on the side and so on. So these rods, as you can see, they fucking hardly been touched. I think it said it's from a 3,000 mile bike. These rods are brand new. These are forged steel, where the R1 rods are forged, cracked um, titanium. And that is reflected in the price. For the MT10, it's 128 quid per rod. For the R1, it's 355 quid. So, you know, you start times in these by four and stuff, you start to see the difference. Again, with the pistons, the MT10 is 92 versus 110. Uh, the piston ring kits are exactly the same. Same part number and everything, same price. Um, wrist pins, 53 quid for the R1 one. Different part numbers, don't know why, couldn't find pictures of them. Uh, the balancer shaft assembly, exactly the same part number, exactly the same price. And the cylinders, the cylinder banks, exactly the same price, exactly the same part number. And when you add all of this up, the difference between both the head assembly and the bottom end, the difference is, is £3,157. So, why do they build? You know, why is is it just to, like, um, the original comment um, from Adam was, is it just to uh, reduce HP to improve power across the rev range? So, no, really, the fact of the matter is, is the engine makes what the engine makes. All these specs between these two engines, apart from the valve timing, are the same changing the valve timing can shift where you know your peak power is it's obviously going to reduce peak power because you're not aiming for the top it it's not about increasing it across the rev range you're just shifting what type of bike it is because at the end of the day the mt10 is a naked street bike and the r1 is well it's your coffin in it you know what i mean it's a killing machine um so why do this? Well, what Yamaha do, and all the other manufacturers, this is not just for Yamaha, I'm just using this as, a, as an example, 
they design and build engines so these these serial numbers you see here you know like the 2cr and the b uh, the b67 and the you know the 2cr is as we've been talking about crankshafts and stuff like that is an engine characteristics and bx48s and stuff like that these are engines right they build engines and then they build bikes to go around them with the r1 it's a bit different and the jix a thousand and stuff like that is that they know that this is the best engine this is the best bike sticking them two together it's going to be the r1 do you know what i mean but they build the engines for other bikes and you know they build engines first what can the engine make fantastic and then it's you know about sticking a frame and wheels and all the rest of it around it and then that's been that's called a bike your 2000 r1 has got nothing nothing in common apart from a decal with the 2018 r1 right they are not the same bikes they share nothing absolutely nothing obviously went cross play and stuff like that but they share nothing right so they are not the same bikes you could be sat in the year 2000 I could go into the future to 2020, get a ZX10, bring it back to 2000. In the meantime, I've sprayed it and put Yamaha badges on it. I could sit you on a Yamaha, on this uh, ZX10 that looks like a Yamaha. You could ride it around and go, oh, I fucking love our ones. But it's not. It's a ZX10. Surprise, motherfucker, kind of thing. The fact of the matter is, is that the old 2000 bikes have got share nothing with the newer bikes you know i think everyone gets that but basically you build an engine then you build a bike to go around that engine and then you go what we're we going to call this oh we're going to call this the r1 you know what i mean and that's in a sense how it goes um so you know there is a big difference between these things but again why do this so they spend all of this money developing this cross plane engine and it could be any engine. It could be there's, you know, Jixa Thau. It could be I don't know, Tuono. It could be anything. It could be a Palangali or anything else like that. So they spend all this money designing and building, you know, building and designing and tooling up for this engine. And then what they do is just say they sell twenty thousand units. Now that's or fifty thousand units. That's all the R ones that they are going to sell at that price bracket. Instead of trying to sell more our ones because they know that not everyone wants that and it's out of everyone's price range what they do is they get that same engine design and it shouldn't be called detuning it should be decosting that's what they're doing like these camshaft assemblies like the valves you know like the conrods like the pistons all of this stuff what they're doing is they're decosting the engine one of the greatest differences you'll probably see and let's see if we can I haven't actually done this yet. Let's see if we can do this on the fly. Um, the Probably the biggest difference is probably going to be the ECU. So number 9, is that number nine, Number 10? Number 10. So this is the ZX. This is the MT-10. Uh, engine control unit, number 10, is £1,000 for the MT-10. For the R1... Is that the same number? Number nine? Yeah, number nine. It's not the same number. Engine control unit, 1,360 quid. So there's a big difference there. Where were we? We were... Engine control assembly unit, number 10. Engine control assembly unit, number nine. There we go. So the difference is... Yeah, Jesus Christ, it's nearly 400 quid. So it's about... 40 percent 35 40 percent difference because this ecu will have better components in it so on and so on and so on you know that kind of gubbins and when we say better components what do we mean well it's probably the clock speed of the processors the sample rate it's probably the sample rate of the processor and all the other electronics that go with it you know it's not just about how high it revs it's about how accurate the r1 engine is to squeeze every single last bit out of it they will be you know the uh injectors will be better the injectors will be more precise and so on and so on a better control stuff like that um so yeah what they're doing is it's a cost cutting thing if we can cut the cost of the r1 by you know 40 percent and then ship those units we can sell them 
and we can sell instead of selling fifty thousand of them, we can sell one hundred and fifty thousand of them. Even though it's at lower cost, the parts cost is a bit lower, so we can sell them for this price bracket, get a lot more units sold, and recover that money that you've spent in designing that engine, and then at the end of the day, make a bit of a profit out of it. So you know the profit margins for an R1. Well, you can just see here the profit margins for an R1 are going to be probably be tighter. Um, you know, because I know these prices are what you're, you know, are being sold to the public, but like I say, the 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 chains are the same price. The exhaust valves with the same part numbers are the same price. Um, you know, it's not the fact that there, it, it's just it says R one on it, so it's more expensive. This rocker cover, it may be that there may be a few things that they kind of, I won't say sneak in because hardly anyone buys brand new rocker covers um and you're not buying a cylinder head assembly not for two grand but <laughs> you know it, it's one of those things where this price listing here gives you an idea you know what i mean of how much um money or how much these cost in relative terms you know the conrods where's the conrods uh conrod assembly it's 128 quid for the steel ones it's 100 uh, 355 for the titanium ones and that makes sense you know what I mean? They are completely different rods when we look at them. You know, these are oh, fucking hell. These are different rods. You know, that's, I know that's a shit picture, but it's the best one I could find. You know, they are different rods, completely different shape, design, and what have you. And these things will be a hell of a lot lighter than these will be. You know what I mean? So it's it's all about stuff like that. Um, like I say, people say detuned. I get why they say that, um, but it's not like they're intentionally good. Let's remove horsepower from this. It's more, you know, let's remove the cost. Um, try and keep as much performance as they can, but for, at a budget, at a price. Because, you know, who is, just say the MT-10, did have the R1 engine in it. Exactly the same. Same R1 engine just slapped in. You know, all the components were all the same, all the same prices, stuff like that. Who is going to pay R1 prices for an MT-10? Well, nobody you'd go and buy the R1. Or you'd say, well, I can't afford the 20 grand it costs for that. So you're, you're basically out of that price bracket. And then someone like Suzuki or Kawasaki will come along and sell you something you know, at that price range. So they can basically shift the technology, they can shift the parts that were tooled. Because a lot of these changes were actually machining changes, some of them material changes. And you notice when it's a material change, the price changes an awful lot. Where if it's a slight material change or something like that, like, you know, these things that will be slightly different machining for the crankcases, stuff like that. You know, maybe like I say, these might be batch A and these are batch B. Nothing wrong with them, but when you're trying to push things to the limit, you want the, the best batch, you know what I mean? Stuff like that. Um, so this is a rough example, you know what I mean? You could sit here forever going through all this stuff and see um, if it does make sense. But it was quite interesting to see how many parts are different, you know, out of all this list of parts here. An awful lot of them have different part numbers. The price, you know, some of these things are similar, you know, but you can see in a sense where the money goes. All we've got here is the head and the bottom end. And you can see where the changes are. Some of them are the same, though. These um, part numbers are the same and the price is the same because it's a tensioner assembly. There's nothing really different, you know what I mean? It's just that this is a different registration, probably just to assign that to R1s and whatnot. So what I'm trying to say in a nutshell is you can't take everything from the part numbers. Um, but that's why I, I had to get you know examples of the actual physical differences, stuff like that. Hope that answers Adam's question. Hope that makes sense to the rest of you. And I'll see you in a bit.